Hello and welcome to a different type of video for my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be commentating over the process I filmed of rehousing this little Hotone Nano Legacy Siva Boogie amplifier head. Now what you will notice is this was the biggest DIY fail ever and I thought about not sharing this video or not putting it up on YouTube because it was such a fail but then I thought no you know what I think it's important to share videos like this no one's perfect I think it's still a fun video it definitely was a DIY fail it ended up looking and being horrendous but I think it's important to share those moments so Without further ado, let's jump into it. So this is what the Hotone Siva Boogie little 5 watt solid state amplifier looks like inside. So I thought I'd take a couple of gut shots just in case you haven't seen it. Maybe you've got one, you've never opened it up. This is what it looks like. It actually looks more like a pedal than an amplifier. It's a, it's a very bizarre kind of uh, situation because it is about the size of a pedal. Um, but you know, it's very cool, very cool. One thing I did find bizarre when inspecting this PCB board, and it's coming up in a second, is that the PCB board, it says Hotone Mojo Diamond on it. That's actually another model of this series of amplifier they make. It's a Fender clone, I believe. There it is there. So I don't know if the Mojo Diamond and the Siva Boogie are the same amp, or they just use the same PCB, but I thought it was interesting. So this is the wood I planned on making our new amplifier head chassis out of. So I measured it to 20 centimeters and ended up with a box that looked like this after some sawing. So that's kind of the concept of what we're going with. I then sanded off the edges so that they were more rounded and smoother corners, which was gonna help uh, with gluing the fabric on later. The gluing was an absolute fail, or the, sorry, the gluing the fabric in particular <laughs> was an absolute fail. But rounding off the corners did help that process. And I actually think it looked really nice once the corners were rounded, as you can see there. Just looks a lot neater and, you know, much better, more usable piece of wood for a project like this. Not that it mattered. So here's the box kind of uh, assembled without gluing it together. You can see the rounded edges on it just to get an idea of what it will look like. This was the next step. This is the fabric I had. It was just lying around. So I was going to cut the fabric to the shapes of each individual piece of wood and then glue it onto the wood, wrap it around the wood, and then glue the pieces of wood with the fabric on it together to make the box. That was a bit of a fail. As you can see, I'm gluing it here. So I've cut this piece of fabric to fit around the wood. There you go, I'm just checking to see if it'll all fit. This is where I start to fail. I've almost failed at every step of the way, which was a very humbling experience, but you know, it is what it is. That's why I thought I'd share it because a negative experience is also worth sharing as well. You only learn from your negative experiences. So as you can see, the glue needed a minimum of half an hour and a maximum of 24 hours to dry. So I let that happen. I then drew a more tight border around each shape like you just saw and then cut it. And then this is how I folded the fabric over the wood and glued it all together. The nails are there to hold the fabric to the wood. As you can see, they're all sitting there. The glue is drying. You can probably already tell it's not gonna work. Another 24 hours have gone. I've let the glue dry. Now I'm taking the nails out. You can see the fabric kind of stuck pretty well on most of them. You're about to see that one of them did not stick very well. Um, but as I said, it was part of the failing process. You live and you learn. I believe this is the one here, which just did not stick. I think I show it to the camera. Yeah, you can see. You know, I probably didn't use the right glue. It definitely wasn't the best way to wrap fabric around wood. What I should have done is just put the box together and then wrapped the whole box in fabric. I did this to try and avoid any, you know, nasty scenes, but all I ended up with was a bunch of bloated pieces of wood with seams anyway, so it didn't really work very well. There you can see the box kind of assembled. The other thing is the glue kind of soaked into the fabric and soaked through the fabric, which is all those, you know, splotchy bits you're seeing. That was a real shame, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway, the box is now glued together except for the very top panel because I need to make a faceplate for the controls to go on. So I found this bit of plastic. 
I drew a line on where I needed to measure it and then I just cut it. It didn't cut, it just kind of broke because it's so brittle, obviously. But the scissors did the job to cut a clean enough line. It would then fit in there and the controls would obviously attach to that. So as you can see, it kind of fits in like that. I do paint it silver because I think the silver looks good and then I uh, drew where I needed to drill for the controls and you know everything else to go through. So that was that process. Once it was uh, all drilled and you know all ready to go, it was then time to put the actual amplifier out of its chassis and attach it just via the you know it was just going to be attached via the controls and the input jack just being screwed tight against it if that makes sense that was kind of a bit of a mess but anyway you can see it broke when i was drilling it so that's a little bit annoying there you can see i'm assembling it you can already tell this is not a great looking amplifier <laughs> It really was a massive fail, but it was my first go at rehousing the amplifier and there are a couple of lessons I would take. So here's the final product. <laughs> first lesson is build the box, then wrap the fabric around the whole box. Second lesson is why not just have a wooden box? Why does it have to be wrapped in fabric? <laughs> Third lesson is start off with a less complex project. Maybe I should have started rehousing a pedal or something. That's what the amplifier looks in the back. It's just hanging there loose. Anyway, that was my DIY journey of rehousing this Hotone Siva Boogie. Hopefully you learned from my mistakes on what not to do and you know, get a bit of a laugh out of this video. I've certainly learned my lesson. I'm about to redo a cab and I've learned lessons on how to do that better. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.